channel. My name's Audrey. If you're new here, hello. Thanks for checking out this video. Um, I am a psychic medium. Didn't ask for it. It's strange, I know. Uh, but I'm on here to share my experiences and information from the other side with the world in hopes to give you hope. Yeah, in hopes to uh, help you survive this thing we called we call life here on this side of the spectrum. <laughs> Today we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about Tylee and JJ Silver Linings broadcast. This is episode five, so I have done episode one, two, three, and four. This is Rex and Adam relatives of Lori Vallow um, from their perspective. Um, I won't go too much into it at this time, but I will stop throughout their broadcast and give you my two cents. So uh, let's see what these two gentlemen are up to. Let's roll the clip. Here we go. My sister, Lori Vallow, murdered her children, Tylee and JJ, and buried them in a pet cemetery. And we're all trying to make sense of it. So let's talk about it. Welcome to this edition of Tylee and JJ's Silver Lining Podcast. We want to talk about a subject today that reflects what we said at the beginning, which is that we want to cover topics that are important to you. When Adam and I started this process, we did not know there was so much ener energy around today's topic. We found that out from your comments. There are so many people that just did not know what was going on right after Charles died. They know that Charles sent his last text to Adam. But then from that and the next three days and the next month until Adam talked to the Chandler police, people don't know. They had a lot of questions. We didn't know that, so we wanted to cover it in this podcast. And the way we're going to do it is have me. If you haven't been to our podcast before, I'm un Uncle Rex or Grunkle Rex, Tylee and JJ's great uncle. I'm Adam's uncle. Adam is Tylee and JJ's uncle and, and Lori Vallow's brother. And we're going to do this in more of a question-answer format where I ask the questions and Adam answers. So let's start off first before we get into questions and answers. Adam, tell us how that came about that you came in town in what turned out to be Charles's death. Okay, so obviously we know that Lori was going through her delusionals or whatever she was going through where Charles was very concerned. Um, and Charles was telling me about a time where him and Lori were taking a bath together, sitting in the bathtub, and Lori was telling him all about you know, things that she saw in the temple and, you know, people that appeared to her and he really got freaked out and he's been freaked out about a lot of things that Lori had said to him. So he has that whole thing in his brain where he was like, something has got to snap Lori out of this delusion or out of this frame of mind that she was in. And at that time we talked about Lori going to the temple like five days a week for three or four or five hours. Every time she goes overload of temple temple work. So Charles thought if Lori got her temple recommend taken away from her, she wouldn't be able to go to the temple, that that may snap her out of all this. That was Charles's thought process after hearing Lori's uh, on and on and on about all these things that she's been telling him. So, you know, he mentioned that to some people in our family and everybody shut him out where I was listening to everything he had to say because I could understand what he was saying after me personally hearing some things that Lori said. So I told him, I said, well, he goes, this is going to be the last draw. I mean, this is, if this doesn't work, then nothing else is going to work. So he wanted uh, me to come to Arizona to try to get Lori in front of the stake president in our church, who I knew the stake president, which was Lori's stake president. I played basketball with him. So my intention was to call him at some point and see if we can arrange a meeting with him and Lori. Now, Charles did say, if Lori finds out you're in town, she's not going to you know, go with you or want to see you or anything. 
So don't tell anybody you're coming to town. But then I said, well, how much, where am I going to stay? You know, so I said, I'll, I'll tell like my mom and my dad and Alex that I'm there just okay. to be with my son um, and hang out I with my son. I, whether I, gosh, hello. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Where am I? So, um, I'm not religious. Okay. Those of you that have been with me for a while know that. Um, I will tell you what, whatever religion this is that this man Adam is in is a cult as well. Um, it's probably going to be offensive to some of you. It's going to be incorrect to some of you, but I will tell you from um, my experiences directly with the divine on the other side, as well as conversations I've had with people who were in cults or religion um, and they've passed and then they explained to me like, what was the purpose of being in the religion? Because we're all, you know, basically going to the same place. We're all getting the same treatment. We all report to the same leader, if you will. Um, so I'll tell you what, just personally, I will never ever, ever turn to a man or head of a church for anything. I'm in control. I'm in charge of myself, my soul, my destiny, my life, everything. Um, you know, I make mistakes. I have to learn those on my own. Never, ever will I hand over myself to another human being in this type of situation, a religious situation, a cult. It's a cult. So coming from my perspective, I just want you guys to see how I'm looking at Lori um, <clears throat> being a cult leader. Um, but for me, I want you to get inside my brain. I want you to understand what I'm going through, what I'm seeing. This is kind of like the kettle calling the pot black or whatever that expression is. So we got Lori's brother here, Adam, talking about how wonderful his cult is, how correct and, and wonderful and, uh, yeah, that wonderful his, his religion is compared to Lori's where they talk about... Um, these different colors of light and um sorry i have spirit trying to come in it's very distracting um obviously adam and his uncle seem very proud of what they believe in that's fine that's them that ain't me mm -mm. the only cult i belong to is the audrey club it's, it's me and you should do the same. You are not required by any law of the universe or quantum physics to be established with an entity. That is not a requirement. And honestly, as I said, we all end up in the same place. So I just wanted to throw my two cents out there. I know a lot of you are going to disagree because you're Don't mentioning anything about, you know, trying to get Lori in front of a state president. So Charles knew that I told my mom and Alex, I even told the story where I called Alex and said, Hey, I haven't spent any time with you. Let me st spend the night at your house so we can hang out. This was before, you know, all the, the crazy stuff had happened. And Alex was trying to, you know, he was hanging out with Lori and he was kind of, I think going back and forth of what he believed or didn't believe. And he said, that would be great. I'm going to go buy a mattress and I'm going to put it in one of my guest rooms and you can spend the night when you come. I said, great. So at that point, Charles knew that Alex knew that I was coming and my mom and dad knew that I was coming. Um, but I didn't say, tell Alex that I was coming there to see if I can get Lori in front of the stake president. I didn't tell my parents that either. So with that being said, that's the reason I, I was coming to Arizona. That was, and that there wasn't really any plan. Charles just said, if we can get her in front of the, the state president, then that would be great. If we don't, then there's, I don't think there's anything we can do, but he goes, this is a last ditch effort for me. This is my last hurrah. This is my last thing to try to, 
to save Lori. And so that wasn't, there was no generic, I mean, there was no planned out plan of, hey, you're going to stay here. You're going to call me at this time. We're going to meet here. We're, there was no plan. It was literally just up in the air. And if it even worked at all. So you got there the day prior to the shooting. That was a Wednesday, I believe. Yes. Okay. And you were planning on staying with Alex. You didn't have any plans for meetings the next day or when you would meet with Charles. Did you know where he was staying? No. Charles said that he was coming in earlier that week and he was doing business there and he was staying in a hotel and it was his time to have JJ. So he says, uh, on Thursday morning, I'm going to go pick up JJ. But I don't know what Charles did when he got there. I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday or and what he did on those days leading up to, you know, going to pick up JJ on Thursday morning. Okay, so when he went there that morning, he saw Alex's truck. He texted you. I believe it said something like, hey, Alex is here. That's weird. What was your response? What what went down from that point on well, that morning? My mind started going all over the place only because when I came to town, I flew in, my mom and dad picked me up and I said, hey, I'm supposed to stay with Alex. I texted him. He hasn't texted me back. And then a couple hours later, I called him. He didn't call back. I texted him again, didn't text back. I thought, and I told my mom, I was like, where's Alex? He's, I'm supposed to spend the night at his house. And he hasn't called me back or texted me back. And she just shrugged her shoulders and says, I don't know where he's at. He hasn't called us either. I said, well, does somebody know where he is? You want know, somebody call him? And it was just kind of like blown off. So I thought, I didn't know. I didn't know what to think. So then when Charles texted me that morning and said Alex's truck was there, I was like, Alex didn't call me back. He didn't text me. I didn't, I didn't go to his house. I spent the night at my mom and dad's that night. And in my mind, I was like, why is Alex at Lori's house? And I thought to myself, I was like, that just, I just didn't feel right about it with all that. I was like, I told Charles, I was like, something doesn't seem right. I was like, be very careful or, or something to that effect of, you know, keep your eyes open or whatever, whatever that was. Cause I was like, something doesn't feel right with Alex not answering my text and being at, spending the night at Lori's house or being there that early. So at this point, had Alex killed anyone that we knew of? No. Okay. We didn't we didn't know of that. So was there any reason to think that at that point Joe was walking into an ambush? Joe or Charles? I'm sorry, Charles. Yeah. Um no. I mean, I didn't know what what I thought that there might be an act a, a, a confrontation or Maybe Alex was there to protect Lori, you know, because, you know, how Lori would use Alex as her protector or whatever it was. So um, I didn't I didn't think that Alex would kill him or shoot him. I mean, that didn't that didn't even register in my mind at that at that time. Right. And so you didn't hear anything back from him. You were just hanging out. You and Zach. So later the day, you hadn't heard anything from him. When did you start texting him, calling him, trying to get in touch with him? Well, that Thursday morning, I texted him and I didn't hear anything back. And I thought, oh, maybe he's spending time with JJ because he told me he was going to pick up JJ. So I waited a couple hours, maybe a few hours later, I texted him. I called him and left him a message. Um, then I texted again later that day. I must have texted him and called him like three or four times that day. And he didn't text back or call. And I thought okay, maybe he's just wanting to spend time with, with JJ. That's what I thought. The other thought that went through my mind, I, I have to take you back a little bit to explain this answer. Lori and Charles got into a fight and Charles was going to divorce Lori before all this happened. Charles was trying to find Lori and Lori skipped town. Didn't tell anybody, my parents, Summer, me, didn't tell anybody where she went or where she was. Charles was trying to get divorce papers to Lori to have her sign divorce papers. Lori didn't want to sign these divorce papers for some reason. And um, Charles could never find her. So Charles called me, called everybody. Where's Lori? Where's Lori? Where's she staying? I, I want to get these papers sent. I want to get divorced. And it never happened. Well, a couple of weeks after that, turns out that Charles 
went to Houston to rent a house and ended up that Lori and him were moving in together into that house in Houston. And Lori told Charles, well, don't talk to Adam anymore. And so for a couple days or a week, I don't know what the timing was, but I remember Charles was told not to, not to communicate with me. Okay. So then finally, after a certain amount of time goes by, I finally called Charles, talked to him. He says, well, Lori and JJ and Tyler are staying in the house, but I don't, I'm not even staying there. I'm staying in another apartment or a hotel, or I don't know. Lori didn't want me to stay there. So at that point, I thought, okay, so as I'm thinking, like, Charles hasn't texted me or called me back, I thought, is there a place? Oh, excuse me a second. So what you were just talking about was back in Houston when they got together temporarily. Right. Okay. Now we're back to back to Chandler. Right. So back to Chandler. I haven't heard from Charles all day on Thursday. Uh, Friday rolls around, and I thought, I called him and texted him. I didn't get anything back. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe this happened again. Maybe Lori got back together again with Charles and they were, and she told him, don't talk to Adam anymore. That's, that's, that was one process that went through my mind. And I thought, well, when Charles is ready to call or text me, he'll do it. So I just kind of like waited around for that to happen. And it, and it, so it and it never happened that day. Well, of course. And as you were waiting to hear from him, what other possibilities went through your mind? That was one that Lori told him not to contact you. What other thoughts did you have? What were your emotions during that time? Well, I was, I literally was a wreck. I was all, all over the place because A, it didn't seem right that Alex was there with, with Lori. B, I haven't heard from, and Charles is a texter. He texted all the time. So I was like, gosh, what well, I'm sure... I'm sure he would want to text me unless Lori told him not to text me and they're back together. So all those went through my mind. And then I thought, man, maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe he took JJ and just, and he took off with JJ. Maybe it was, it was his turn to disappear and took JJ somewhere and didn't want anybody to find him and JJ for a while. So, and then I thought, well, could, could Lori and Alex have done something to Charles? Like, so this this point right here reminds me kind of of the Watts case where we see Shanann walking up to the doorway. So many times we watch that video and it's like, oh, my God, please just turn around and go turn around and leave, leave with your life. It would have been that simple. It would have been that quick to not be murdered. And as I'm listening to these two guys talk, that's that's kind of what I feel like, too. If only, if only, if only, if only Charles could have just grabbed JJ and left. Things would have been different. Does it mean the lives would have been saved? It would have been a chance. So, you know, we talked about like the Delphi murder. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll say it till the day I die. And that is, you can't trust anybody. You can't trust the 3000 people that live in your, your community. You can't always trust your family. Any, you know, and I'm not saying run around and be a, th be scared that everyone's threatening you, but be smart. Think you got to You have to stop and think what exactly is going on? Always, always oh, try and be over safe than under safe, if that makes any sense to you. All right, let's continue. My mind literally was in circles at that point. And what were you feeling about, about it? Oh, I had a knot in my stomach the whole time. I was sick. My, my son was with me the whole time. And I kept on telling him, I was like, gosh, something just doesn't feel right. But at that point, what do you do? You, I didn't know where Lori lived. I didn't know where Charles was staying. Nobody would call me back. My family, you know, wasn't giving me any information. Um, I even called Colby because me and Zach and Colby were supposed to go play basketball the whole time I was there. Colby's never returned any of my texts, just like Alex. They both just shut it off. So in my mind, I'm like, Lori must have control over everybody about cutting me off. 
for some reason, because I told her I thought, you know, she was crazy at that one point. <laughs> so right. um, I thought I'm the one that's trying to get help for Lori and I'm the one that everybody's cutting off. That's what I thought. So Friday went by and I still didn't hear back from Charles. And I was like, I was supposed to go see my friend Eric on Saturday. So me and Zach got in the car and drove to Tucson to see my friend Eric. And the whole way down, I just had a terrible feeling in my stomach. And I was like, it's been two days. I haven't heard from Charles. You know, something may, you know, may have gone wrong. I don't know where he's at. I was worried to death. So I was telling my friend Eric, I was like, I, I, so Lori and Alex may have done something to, to Charles because I haven't heard back. And Eric was just laughing. He was like, yeah, right. You know, what are they going to do to him? You know, kind of thing. And so he looked up, he goes, well, what's Charles's last? last name. And I said, Charles Vallow. And so he looks up on the computer and it pops up and he said, it says here that Charles Vallow is killed by his brother-in-law. And I was like, shut up. And I, and I told him to be quiet. Cause I know that he was, I, sometimes he jokes around. I thought there's no way you're, he's definitely joking around. He goes, no, I'm being serious. It says it right here. And I ran over to the computer screen and I saw it and I just started bawling. I just started crying. My stomach was in a knot. I couldn't believe that I read that, that Alex actually killed him. My first thought was, it said that Alex um, shot him in self-defense. And I was like, if you shoot somebody in self-defense, a family member, and you have to do that, you shoot him in the leg or something like that. And it said he killed him. He shot him in the chest. I was like, to me, that is not um, somebody who's trying self-defense. That is a murder. That's killing. And then my mind started thinking like Lori and Alex killed Charles. Okay, so before that, you hadn't really seriously considered that as a possibility. No. I, I didn't think anybody could... I didn't think my family could kill anybody. Down, You came back to town at that point. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you this story. Yeah, I, I had called my I had called my mom. At first I called Kay, Charles's sister. I said, Did you know that Charles is dead? She goes, Yeah, I just found out, like not too long ago or whatever. And I was like, How come how come somebody a member of your family can be dead for three days and nobody calls you? If it's an accident or if it is self defense, that morning, on Thursday morning, why wasn't there a massive text to everybody telling everybody what happened why was it so hush hush and why didn't anybody tell anybody that 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 to me red flags went up like crazy so at that point you're thinking okay maybe this was an ambush maybe it was a setup right you and zach are coming back to chandler did you were you concerned about your own safety well, at that point, I was like, you know, they killed Charles. And was it for the million dollar policy? Obviously, that was part of it because you heard phone calls about that early, later in the in the story. We heard about that. Um, but why would. The, and then I started thinking, if if I'm the person that they're trying to cut off because I'm trying to get Lori help. That me and Zach were like scared to death as we were coming back. And I thought, is Alex going to be, because me and my mom had a, had a conversation and the conversation went like this on the phone when I was driving back. I was like, what the hell is going on? And she turned around on me and says, yeah, you tell me what the hell is going on. And at that point, I was like, how in the world are you saying that to me when I didn't know that Charles was dead? And apparently at that point, Lori must have said a, a huge lie about, you know, us trying to come get her and my mom bought into it. Right. So at that point, I'm like, as I'm coming back and me and Zach were kind of like, are we walking into an ambush? And at first I was like, if we walk into the house and they kill us, then they kill us. But I have got to know what the heck is going on. So we went back to my mom and dad's house and I ended up, I'll tell this story the next podcast, but we, me and my mom and my dad and Tylee was there. It was the last time I saw. Remember, you guys, this entire thing is about sex, power, and money. 
remember that at the end of the day, all these horrible things that people did are for sex, power, and money. The desire to have those three things has turned, it turned a couple people into murderers, didn't it? Well, Tylee Alive, there was a huge fight that went on at that house. And we talk about that in the, this next episode coming up. The whole thing is about that whole thing with Tylee and my family and all that. But, but we had to spend the night at Summer's house. We were we told Summer, my sister, who actually left to New York with her family to go on vacation. While you're here, can you watch our dog? And I was like, sure, me and Zach would love to stay there and watch your dog. So we were coming back to my mom's. We had that huge fight. Then we went to Summers after that, not knowing what to think was going to happen at that point. And you were supposed to stay at Summers that night. You talked with Summer, I believe. So I had a phone conversation with Summer and I called her and I was like, did you know that Charles was dead? And she's, she said, no. And I'm like, how you're, you're acting like, did you, I'm just, I'm telling you right now for the first time that you're hearing it, that Charles is dead. I'm the one telling you this right now. No one's told you that Charles is dead. And she said, no. And I, I was like, you're not surprised or shocked. And so I was like, really thought it was in the twilight zone for a second. Cause I'm like losing my mind. And summer's like, um, no, I, I, you just tell me he's dead. I said, yeah, Alex and Lori or, or Alex shot him supposedly in self-defense, but it's, and then I went on a tangent of saying, if Charles is dead on Thursday morning, why didn't you know? Why didn't, why wasn't there a text, a family text go out saying what happened and, and you saying you didn't know, but you're not acting surprised at all. So I'm like, Summer, you actually, you, somebody already told you. And she just started crying. And she goes, I don't want to lose my family. That's what Summer said on that phone call with me. And I don't blame her because... Sometimes family must get lost. Sometimes it's better to walk away from your, quote, family. You know, but apparently she, I don't know, to this day, I still don't know the answer to that. Cause she's never told me, but I believe that Lori and everybody told her what happened or my mom or somebody. But so I felt like I'm the oddball out. I'm staying at summer's house. Alex is out there somewhere. Me and Zach are staying there. We changed our, our flight, got a flight. We, you know, Zach wasn't even planning on going to Kansas. We bought him a flight, changed my flight to the earliest flight out to go to, to uh, back to Wichita, Kansas, where we're, where I lived, and so we stayed up all night in Summer's house, looking around the house, locked all the doors, turned every light on. We did not sleep a wink, and um, it was like I I literally I couldn't sleep all night. I just had it not in my stomach, thinking my whole family is on some kind of conspiracy, and I'm the one that's left out. So in this situation with you and Zach, why'd you decide to go back early? What were you concerned about staying up all night? Well, that that if Alex killed Charles and shot him in the chest and killed him, that he could be coming after us for some reason. So in and, and the back of my mind, I was like, there's no way my brother would kill me. Like, there, think about that. Think about your brother. Is there any possible way that you could think that your own brother would go into a house and shoot and kill you? No. So I started thinking that. I was like, well, I know this thing happened with Charles, but I don't, I mean, there's, there's definitely a possibility. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I just don't think Alex would do that. But uh, obviously in that frame of mind that he was in with Chad and Lori and all of his, you know, what he, what he thought he was this angel or whatever. Um, now that I think about it, you know, and after the text came out not too long ago that I found out that me and Zach were on the list that were zombies that should be killed. Um, yeah. So 
I'm glad we got out of there. I'm glad nothing happened to us that night. Um, but it was like, uh, it was, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Okay. You got out of there. So back to Kansas, did you feel safe then? No, no. As soon as I got back to Kansas, um, I, my wife at the time, Nicole, I was like, I don't know what is going on, but I, Alex killed them. Who knows who else he's going to kill? Um, and it, so we, everywhere we went, I said, make sure you look out at, out the windows, wherever you go, look around. Uh, um, and so we, we all were just on high alert for a long time while we were living in Wichita. For how long? Oh, I don't, probably three or four months, maybe. Okay. So you just didn't know what the possibilities were. Right. I didn't know what, what the plan, what their planning was. I don't know why they would want to kill us. You're not going to get any money from us. We're not on your life insurance policy. What good would it be? Again, this is a tactic that cults, Cults use tactics all the time. That's how they get you into the cult. That's how they get you to stay in the cult. That's how they get you control over you and they get your money. There's no such thing as zombies. Okay. Number one, human beings cannot be angels. We cannot turn into angels. We have not been angels. Um, lots of lying here, lots and lots and lots of brainwashing. And remember, Alex was a little touched in the head. He had been, he had a brain injury. Uh, was that the reason he he ended up doing this? I don't know. Um, well, I don't know. He Maybe he'll come in because he did come in, I think, in my last video and I can kind of fill him right now. Uh, but Lori doesn't. Be, what good would it do you to kill us? So, I it's just all these thoughts kept going in my mind back and forth and back and forth. And it was just the most uneasy time of my life. So did you think of calling the police? Oh, at that point? well, I thought for sure that the police would be calling me as soon as I found out that Charles was shot and killed. And I was the last one to text him. I was like, well, f the police are going to call me and I can tell them everything that I that went on and what I think. And the police never called. And I thought, this is weird. Like, Lori and Charles told the police officers they were fighting over Charles's phone. That's the main piece of evidence. And next thing you know, the police, after interviewing Lori, leave the house without the biggest piece of evidence. They leave it in Lori's hand. Lori has Charles's phone for at least 24 hours before the police go, oh, yeah. Yeah, we forgot the phone. Lori, can you bring it in? Four hours even after that, then Lori brings it in. And so I didn't know. And the police never called me. They didn't look at the, the text, say, hey, you were the last one to text Charles. What's going on? So Nicole, my wife, had called, didn't get a response. Then, you know, a couple of weeks later, I called. I was waiting for them to call. They never called back. And then finally, at some point, an officer had called me. And I was like, we're been trying to get a hold of you guys. I've called you and left you messages. And here's, so you, here's what I want to tell you. In one of our interviews together, Adam, you famously said, it was three months they didn't call. Turns out it was about a month. Can you explain that discrepancy? It seemed like a year, to be honest with you. I mean, every day, that 24 hours was the slowest. Every day was so slow. And I thought to myself, the police should be calling me to get information and they're not and me calling them and leaving them messages and then not calling back for a couple of weeks or three weeks it seemed like forever so one month seemed like three months to me okay Fair so enough. not a malicious mistake in saying it was three months no, no. there wouldn't be any reason to uh to do that no um so your conversation with Detective Moffat is out on YouTube, so it's not not uh, um, difficult to find to listen to what the content of that was. Is there anything else about the timing after after Charles sending you that text up until the point? I suppose even talking with Det Detective Moffat, when did you find relief and say, "Okay, Al's not after me anymore"? 
I'm not going to have to look over my shoulder everywhere I oh, go. He's dead. Well, I, I've ne- I never felt like that until I found out that Alex was dead. Like, I never felt comfort that he, I didn't know what they were up to. I remember during, you know, after that, I got a call from Brandon telling me he just got shot at, at his house. And I was like, like and he goes, I think it was Alex. I was like, it, it definitely was Alex. It's on a killing spree right now. And so that even higher, my whole, my whole mind was like, what is happening right now? And so, yeah, until the day I found out that Alex died, I didn't know where he was, what he was doing, what he was capable of, what their, their plan was, who they were trying to kill, why they were killing him. I mean, just thoughts in my head were just nonstop. So I didn't ask you this before. Was Brandon part of your and Charles's plan to talk to Lori back? No. Um, I've heard that. I've heard this so many times. There was a plan with you and your son and Charles and Brandon. Charles and, uh, I mean, Brandon and my son were not involved at all with that. At all. Charles called me out of the blue, said, Lori, you know, I already told you that story. We got to get Lori help. This will be our last ditch. If there was no actual plan to go get her. I didn't even know where Lori was. Didn't know even know how to get a hold of her. Didn't know how, you know, any of that stuff. And Charles was like, if, if we don't see her or if we can't get in front of her, then, you know, this plan's just, it's not going to work. And she's, she's going to be, she's going to be gone forever. So far as being lost forever with her the delusions. So Charles obviously knew where she was because he went to pick up JJ, but he had never told you where she lived or no. where that was. No, I no idea where Lori's house was or where Charles got Lori's house at all. Uh-uh. Okay. Well, we have about a minute left in this podcast. Uh, you talked about what we're talking about the next podcast. Let me just reiterate that. There's a lot of energy, as there was for this subject, around Adam and his family and the rift it caused in his immediate family between Adam, his parents, etc. So we're going to address that in the next podcast because it's going to take a little bit of time. But that's really the focal point of Adam's message in these podcasts and my message. He's going to talk about what it does to a family and what your family might watch out for. And I'm going to talk about how Lori led this kind of revolt in the family, how she could have stopped it. And maybe it'll give you some ideas about how you can stop it. So you can stay tuned for that one. Adam, any closing remarks? Um, I just, I I'm, I'm relieved that we're talking about this because I do my main purpose of the the book that we're writing in these podcasts are to help other families that could be going through anything that's even similar to this. So um, hopefully the next podcast can, can help that too. We didn't talk about any silver linings in this podcast, but stay tuned. Yeah. This has been Tylee and JJ silver line. Hmm. Okay. So there we have it. Half hour podcast from Lori Vallow's brother and uncle. Um, now you may be saying, well, who are you to talk about any of this stuff? You're nuts because you're claiming to be a psychic medium. Well, it's not a claim. It's a fact uh, for one. And also factual is the fact that there's no such thing as zombies. Um, the facts that revolve around a cult. I did grow up with my father being in a cult. He still has issues, as does my entire family. Um, So I have a lot of experience with this uh, personally as well. And um, we'll see what the next one brings. Um, Thanks for watching this video, you guys. I enjoy doing these reaction videos. I feel more like um, you're just here at my house. We're having coffee and watching this together because I don't watch it until I film it here for you guys. So, um, I'll see you soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, share the video, tell your friends that I'm back. A lot of the people still aren't aware of that. We're almost to a thousand subs. That's exciting. Uh, and there's lots of exciting things coming in the future. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye.